Yeah, it can be a little bit scary and a little bit intimidating. And I remember it well when I first unboxed my brand new Instant Pot. Today on the Spicy Apron Cooking Show, I am going to give you my top three tips for Instant Pot newbies. Well, I just finished filming and putting together my brand new Instant Pot video course. I'm super excited about it, and I am going to share with you what I thought were my top three tips from that course. Whether you're new to Instant Pot, or you've had it for six months sitting on your counter, or it's been in your garage in a box since last Christmas, one thing you probably have heard is Oh my gosh, how do I get that odor smell out of the Instant Pot ceiling ring? I'm going to help you out. You don't ever have to have that problem. Here is one of my very favorite tips. The Instant Pot lid, as you all probably know by now, has a ceiling ring, a gasket. It is silicone and a lot of people complain that it smells. Well, you can avoid that problem because if you store your Instant Pot with your lid inverted with the ring exposed to air, it won't trap all the odors and it won't smell. So please do yourself a favor with your brand new Instant Pot. Always, always, always store it with the lid upside down. And I promise you, you will not have that issue. I have had my pots for well over two years. I've never had to replace the gasket. It doesn't smell. So please make sure when you store it, store it inverted, and you will be way ahead of everybody else. Oh, and speaking of the lid, this is a bonus tip. It's not one of my three. Almost all models have this little tab right here, and it fits perfectly into the handles on the side. It is a lid holder, and I use it all the time. Almost all models have that. If you have it, check it out, use it, you'll love it. Tip number two, all of these buttons. And this is going to be kind of an abbreviated lesson for the buttons because obviously there are so many. But what I wanna give you for my tip is the overall purpose of all of these buttons. As you know, you got soup and stew and bean and you might have cake and all of these buttons. They are not magical buttons. Well, I, you know, the Enzyme Pot itself is kind of magical, but think of these buttons more as convenience buttons. Kind of like when you have your favorite radio stations in your car and you preset them to certain stations. These are presets. That is all they are and you can change them. And it's important to note they all come at a certain default setting. So the stew button I believe defaults to 30 minutes at high pressure, which is great because a lot of people when you make stew it's going to be 30 minutes. But let's say there's a particular type of stew that I like to make, maybe it's venison, I don't know, and I always cook it on 20 minutes at high pressure. All I do is I hit the stew button, I hit the minus button until it goes down to 20, and then I wait until it starts its cycle, and guess what? The next time I hit that stew button, it will be 20 minutes at high pressure, which is what I use it for. So a good example, the porridge button. I always do steel cut oats. I always do them for 12 minutes. So what I have done is with porridge, I used it, I got it down to 12 minutes, I let it set itself, and every single time I push porridge now, it's 12 minutes on high pressure, which is exactly what I want, and it's the only thing I ever use that button for. So think of the buttons as presets that you get to control and make it perfect for you. And before I get to tip number three, I do want to let you guys know, like I said in the beginning of the video, I did just come up with an Instant Pot video course. It is packed full of information, so if you really do need tips like the ones I'm sharing with you, check it out. I put a link down below. It is called the How to Be the Boss of Your Instant Pot, and it is a 30 video course. It covers all kinds of things. If you click the link, you'll see the page that it talks all about it. And if you scroll down, you'll even see the full curriculum. So if you're at all interested in that kind of thing, go ahead and click the link. And 
until December 26th. It is on sale for 33% off because that is my launch date is December 26th. Now, tip number three, this is a question I get asked all the time. How do I convert my awesome crock pot recipes to Instant Pot recipes? Now, I go over this in more detail in my Instant Pot course, but the general rule of thumb that you guys need to know is the very first thing to remember, always make sure you add a cup of liquid to your Instant Pot when you are converting your crock pot recipe. Many crock pot recipes do not have any liquid at all. If it does have a cup of thin liquid, that's fine. Just you don't need to add more, but you do need to have at least one cup of thin liquid when you're taking a crock pot recipe and putting it in your Instant Pot. The next rule of thumb, do not overfill your Instant Pot. This two thirds max line is here for a reason. If you're pressure cooking anything, do not exceed that. It either will not come to pressure or you will have a big old mess on your hands when it's done. So make sure you don't overfill it. I know crock pots can be filled right up to the brim. Please do not do that with your Instant Pot. And then the last piece that I'll tell you here is if you have a crock pot recipe that cooks meat or whatever for let's say your eight hour cycle on your crock pot, you're probably gonna wanna pressure cook it on high for about 30 minutes. If it's a recipe that is a four hour recipe, you're probably gonna wanna cook it for about 20 minutes. There you have the crock pot conversion overview. Like I said, there's more detail in my course. And if you want more tips in the future, please subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. And if you really do want some help to get going with your Instant Pot and make sure you get the most out of your Instant Pot, please check out the link to the course. It could be very helpful to you. Happy cooking.